Welcome to IC Talks. My name is Alma Bukhala and I'm a student in grade 10. My team and I are working on a campaign for our world, our concern, as part of the Savage Stars competition. In this podcast, we will dive into the fascinating world of artificial intelligence and its impact on society. In this series, we aim to raise awareness about AI, exploring its potential and its ethical implications. Join us as we navigate through the complexities of AI, bringing you insightful discussions, interviews, and thought-provoking insights to help you understand and engage with this transformative technology. Get ready to explore the possibilities and challenges of AI with us on IC Talks. As part of our series, on the first episode, we have a teacher-student perspective. Joining me today is Ms. Zena, our chemistry teacher, and Kinda, a senior in our school. Starting with Ms. Zena, what do you think of AI? So my own perspective about the topic is that this is a change that is happening and we cannot stop it. Artificial intelligence is evolving every second that we're talking and it's revolutionizing the industry, education and everything that is happening. However, my own point of view on the topic is that we need to be on hold of the topic in terms of where is this going and where are we going to be and especially from an ethical point of view on how can we control it and how can we monitor this change that is happening and where is it going to lead us because I'm with it because it's happening anyway whether we like it or not but it should be monitored and it should be regulated in a way that doesn't uh, increase discrimination between people, it doesn't increase isolation between people, and it also it doesn't leave people without jobs without creating new ones for them. So this is what I think about it. Interesting. Now what about you, Kinda? What do you think of AI? Okay, I think that everyone is trying to join the AI and technology field. So as Ms. Zena said, uh, it's going to affect jobs, it's going to affect students, it's, it's going to affect teachers even more because like us as students, we're going to use it in our homeworks and studying. So I think it's a positive thing, a positive and it has a positive impact on like our daily lives. Uh, as a student studying computer science in university, I think that we should be aware of the risks it has on, on employ, employability in general. Because when I join the job market, uh, AI is gonna, it's gonna remove jobs, but also create new ones. So you have to, we have to spread awareness on how AI affects jobs and studying in general, like university and applying for jobs. I mean, the job market. I agree. I mean, speaking about jobs and AI, what do you think is gonna, what changes do you think are gonna happen to your job in let's say 20 years with AI? So hopefully if in 20 years I'm still a teacher and I have the energy in me to continue this job, uh, I think it's going to be completely changed. The dynamics of this job will completely and drastically change in a way of how I interact with my students. So the responsibilities I have as a teacher is to make sure that the information is delivered to, let's say, 20 students at the same time making sure I use different methods to take into account the different and to differentiate between the students. So maybe in 20 years, we would reach a point where AI can be an augmenting tool. So I, I hope it won't replace me, but it will be a helping tool for me on how I can use different methods and different techniques into delivering uh, a lesson or a certain concept. So maybe it will have a, a really good impact on education or it will make my job easier but at the same time um, maybe a lot of the human human interaction I think will disappear and the teacher student relationship will be less if we're talking about complete uh, complete change of the of the teaching having an AI model hopefully we don't reach it um, and yeah that's it <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to wait and find out um if you guys could make your own AI, what would you like make it focus on doing? Okay, besides using it um, to write my college essays <laughs> now, I would like it to pick my outfits and actually get uh, like 
a nice outfit together. Like I d- a personal stylist. Oh, yeah, <laughs> basically a personal stylist. It's like it's so much stylist. It takes so much time. I'd put the pieces I have and it generates an outfit each day. Because yeah, it takes so much Maybe time. Maybe depending on your mood. Yeah, oh. probably. That's so cool. And what about you, Zayla? Um it's a, it's a it's a it's a hard question i don't know if it's if we're talking about helping tools and augmenting tools um uh, maybe i would like to see it more in the emotional field you know like maybe it can read your emotions or your mood and it has to do this part with people because sometimes it's stressful to know the mood of the person in front of you or how do, uh, or how are they feeling uh, so maybe an AI could help us with that. Just the model, you can wear it. It looks at the person in front of you and it tells you how they're feeling. Could help. Very interesting. Um, going back to you, Kinda, um, how many years do you think it's going to take until AI st- starts taking over major jobs that we use today? Okay, I actually thought a lot about this because after university, I'm, I want to major in finance. So there's there's an industry in finance called fintech. It's basically finance and technology. And I had to read a lot about this, uh, about how finance is going to be... Uh, it's going to dom- disappear. <laughs> Sadly, it's going to be dominated by yeah. le- um, electronics and whatever. But it's great that you found, found this out right now. Yeah, after it. exactly. And I think this is the why it's important this to spread is- awareness on this topic, because uh, Kinda, as a student who's going into university, she has to put a lot of thought into the career path she's going to take. And it's amazing that this happened with her now. But a lot of students do not have the no- enough knowledge about the topic to see how AI is changing jobs, that some jobs are going to completely disappear and new jobs are going to emerge. But a lot of them are going into the fields that are slowly being dominated by AI and that are going to disappear. So it's really nice that you did this research. And it's moving at a very fast pace. So I think in like maybe five years, all the financial sector is going to be dominated by AI. So that's really sad. It is. Yeah. What do you think? How many years? I think it has already started. So yeah, it sure. has already started. Maybe some jobs where a lot of human human interactions are going to be slower than others. Um, maybe doctors or the medical field in general, it's going to take uh, more time than the financial field. Yeah. So it depends on the field, but it already it's already started and it is happening. Uh, what jobs do you think are right now already being taken over by AI? Um, a lot of, as she said, as Kinda said, a lot of financial banking jobs are being taken over by AI. Especially that they're creating new financial apps, like on your mobile, you can just pay everything on your phone. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah finance. Okay. Maybe in the future, even editing, video editing, with the yes. with the with Sorry, the changes no. that are happening with the video and the AI video making, maybe the cinematic industry is going to change drastically, relying on AI. More. I also heard that they're creating new robots to perform. I've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's scary. scary. It's so Imagine scary. Imagine having a robot performing an open heart surgery. Yeah, it's not. It's not even a person, and you you handing your life in this in this robot's hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always brings a question in my head like if we end up at a point and I want you to think about this about this with me if we end up with a point where everything is run by AI what is our job then <laughs> what are yeah, yeah, you yeah, doing yeah. Like, what is the goal of human being what, what would the goal be it's true like, on a daily basis. just think about it. there's no need to what would motivate us to go to school? Like, why would we learn? Need because to if we work. replace it, like, yeah. why would we work? Because if we have an AI model, and if that happens, it's very hard for me to imagine how the economical model is going to look like and how the societal model is going to look like. Because now the societies are based on people having jobs, doing the responsibility, getting money, paying others, and the cycle continues. But if everything is run by AI, and if we get to that point where we don't really have to do anything, <laughs> then what will we be doing? That's an interesting way to look at it. Um, this is kind of a controversial question. Who do you think should be allowed to use AI? Should it be open to the public or should it be open to certain people? Or what do you think? I think this is a very important question to think about and to ask ourselves when we get to a point where AI is um, 
in the market for different jobs, for different uh, education levels as different tools, who will have access to it? Is it going to be like throughout history? A lot of technologies have been available for people in certain countries that are privileged, that are rich, and in other countries it takes 50 years for this technology to reach them. And I think when this happens, it's going to create an even bigger gap between the people. The privileged are going to get more privileged and the poor will be poor. And the same happens on countries. Because if we take education as an example, if AI becomes an augmenting tool in a lot of learning skills and teaching technologies, if the privileged kids, let's say, in certain areas and in certain countries have that access, this will help them to evolve more and more and to make, let's say, economical achievements, which will privilege them more. But at the same time, the others who don't have this, the, those tools that are still working with, uh, let's say, the orthodox methodologies of learning and teaching and the world is going in another direction, this creates this big gap. So it's very important to ask this question. Once it is available, it should be accessible to everybody. However, this is um, a dream that will not take place. Yeah, yeah, especially that it's going to affect, as Ms. Dana said, uh, it's going to affect the rich and the poor. And in order to make everyone uh, on the same level and like promote equality, it has to be available to everyone. Because if it's not available, to everyone like if it's available to only governments at sea and like important people corruption is gonna it's like it's gonna increase a lot yeah, I, yes available to everybody but we don't have to forget that it has to be regulated at the same time so, yeah. because if it's accessible to everybody this we means the good and the bad are going to use it yes. for different intentions and we need tools and uh, regulations to help us identify which is what is real and what is not in different aspects of our life. What limitations do you guys think should be put? Uh, the, what limitations should be? Because if it's open to everyone, we're going to have to put yeah. in place. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 yeah sure. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, I think the, the limitations are uh, mainly in the educational sector. Or as much as I, as far as I know, I think that we have to put some rules and boundaries on how to use it. For example, when uh, doing our homeworks, we can't really use AI because it's this is not the point of the homework. You know? And this is where it gets hard because yeah. how would I know? So as a teacher, exactly. if she did an essay or a research or she wrote a paper and she submitted it, how can I, as a teacher, know if it was AI generated or not? Actually, there is an AI for to, to analyze the yeah. AI generated. So you, can, you can identify you can, whether this essay already, is written. So that's one of the limitations that should be yes. applied in this the education. Already, this is already going on. In the education system, it should it should be limited on how it's used. It should be it could be used to help with a certain understanding or to learn a certain concept, but it shouldn't do our work at the end. The student should do the work. Maybe another limitation would be a scary idea for me is that now you can generate a video for anybody. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> scary. We that's need scary. limitations or we need further d technologies to detect that. Like this is a fake video because and it should can't. start with the video. Yeah, this it's is a also, fake one. It invades your privacy too. It's and scary. I think it should be maybe in the laws. Like, yeah. If you're doing a video and it's AI generated, you you're to obligated to state yeah. that it's AI generated. And it, it is applied for everything, a research paper, a video, uh, an audio. You have to state that it is a AI generated. I believe that we should also have a an AI that can also, yeah. same thing for writing, for videos, that can also analyze videos, tell you if this video is fake, tell you if this video is actually real. But this development has happened faster than, than the video one is happening. In that case, we'll be on the safe side. And another important limitation that is uh, brought in a lot of the discussions when, we, when AI is discussed is the ethical aspect that we're teaching the artificial intelligence. One of the, a famous example is the idea if we're going to have a self-driven car that is going to learn how to deal with the traffic and whatever comes along. Um, ethical situation where if it happens where the car has to hit either the driver had to have an accident that will injure the driver or to have an accident that will injure bypasses that are crossing the road and this is a very 
uh, hard ethical dilemma because the AI will be programmed into protecting humans, but this is a situation where a human has to be harmed and the AI has to take that decision. So there's a huge limitation in this aspect because as human beings, it's an ethical dilemma to us. So it's going to be transferred into AI as well. Um, Who would you hit? <laughs> um, what effect on your mental well-being in general or everyone's mental well-being do you guys think AI is going to have? Because the interactions with anyone and interactions in general are going to be so limited. So what effect do you think this is going to have? You know, when, uh, when the question uh, that you asked about uh, how AI is, is available to everyone and if it's not available to everyone, I thought about how kids are not going to uh, play like outside they're just gonna sit on their tablets and just uh, chat all day which is actually what they're doing these it's days already happening. yeah but in the future yeah. let's say in five to ten years playing outside wouldn't be an option yeah it's uh when 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 you tell someone that oh you should go and touch some grass they they look at you and they they'd be like what are you talking about that's that's not happening anymore so I think the mental health for kids is going to deteriorate like crazy. But us as, as adults, or should to be adult, um, when, like, let's say in 10 years, I would know how my childhood was and how I used to play outside. So I my mental health wouldn't be affected as much because I saw the evolution of AI and I lived in it. You know what's funny? <laughs> My generation says the same about your generation. No. Yeah. Because you the guys computers. live in the age of technology of computers, tablets, and, and I'm not that old. <laughs> But my generation says exactly the same about your generation. And I think this is something that will Continue. definitely happen. It's not true. Whether AI uh, evolution takes place or not, the older generation always talks about the younger one. Like, yeah. they're not playing as we did. They're not doing this as we did. And my mom used to say the same thing about me. And my grandma said the Every same thing. Every generation is going to see this. So maybe it's not going to happen. So yeah. we're going to say it anyway. So maybe AI is not the reason for it. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. About that, my point of view. I'll have okay. show. So no. from a mental point of view, what do you think this... Is gonna affect. I think this is this imposes or this suggests two scenarios. Uh, either we get to a point where everybody is isolated and there's no human human interaction because everything is run by AI and we're just using social media to to discuss. This is scenario number one. But scenario number two, maybe we get to a point where because every job or every work is done by AI, people have more freedom and more free time. Maybe more free time to explore, more free time to be in nature. If they use it twice, uh, it's all if, about it's if, all about. If time. we get to a point where we free the human being in order to be more creative in other aspects, if we free their minds from certain aspects, maybe they can be creative in other things. So I don't know how the future is gonna look. Maybe completely isolated or more free to be creative. And I hope it's the second scenario. You know, Ms. Zina, uh, when you mentioned the first scenario, uh, the wall in Saudi popped in my head. Do you know the wall, the virtue and the word that's... Oh, a stone yeah. in the desert. Yeah, yeah the one that they want to build in... Oh, the, 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 the city. city. Yeah, and it's ah, a virtue and city and everything. Okay, so imagine if you live there. <laughs> it's already happening. Oh, like it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be like talking about like our generation now and then talking about like ancient Egyptians. It's gonna be, they're gonna look at us this year. Yeah. They, oh, they already see me like as old. <laughs> so I think it's already happening. Like this virtual word world is like it's it's being sooner, built yeah, it's at the moment we, yeah, yeah it's sooner than we think yeah yeah like if it's a so this was it for our first episode i hope it really helped open your eyes and learn more about the topic of ai um sharing this video will uh, help reach more people and spread more awareness about this topic to also increase our chances in winning the competition of Sabah stars and that's it thank you yeah